How would you make a decision that put your future at risk, that put your life on the line, but that could also give you a newfound freedom and give those around you freedom to live their lives as they so choose? How would you make that decision? When I think about this picture behind me, George Washington crossing the Delaware, Christmas Day of 1776. It reminds me how important big decisions are in our lives, but it also reminds me how important it is to develop a sense of making good decisions, developing a better sense of, of how to gain clarity of a situation in order to make the best decision we can not only for our own personal outcome and achievement, but also for those we serve. I'm James Fifelski with the Master Lawyer Academy, and here we talk about all things criminal defense, criminal justice, criminal justice reform, exonerations, uh, the how-tos of becoming a better criminal defense attorney, all of the things that we as criminal defense attorneys think about in our day-to-day -day practice, but also sometimes dream about in terms of trying to make the criminal justice system work better for those of us who are working in it day-to-day, -day, but also, more importantly, for those who we serve in the criminal justice system, our clients. Today is January 3rd of 2022. I haven't been doing uh, videos for quite a while. It was suddenly a very busy year in my own law practice. We all went through the struggles of 2020 with COVID hitting our country and the world. And I don't know about you, but my practice uh, slowed down quite a bit. Fortunately, we came into 2021 and things started to pick up. I got really busy. So other projects that I've had, like uh, speaking to you, sharing videos, publishing other content, uh, social media, fell by the wayside, and now I'm here to regroup, recalibrate, and renew my own uh, mission of trying to serve those of you who are in the criminal justice system, both as attorneys and possibly also as people accused of crimes or defendants who've been wrongfully convicted and want to seek exoneration. As we begin this year, there's so much talk about New Year's resolutions and how to make 2022 the best year that we've had so far. And I don't know about you, but every year seems to replicate so much of what the year before held in store for us. Um, those resolutions we make at the beginning of the year may last us a few weeks, maybe even a few months if we're lucky unless we really begin to dial in our decision-making ability and dial in our resolution process so that when we decide we're going to do something, we have a much stronger outlook for the future in achieving that outcome that we'd like to see happen. One of the key things that I've learned and that I think is worth passing on, and, and some of you may have heard of this, some of you, this may be new to you, but it's, it's been a good reminder for me, I've heard from other people, uh, Tony Robbins, Russell Brunson, other uh, authors that I follow, the 80-20 rule. When it comes to decisions about how to make this the best year possible, this very simple yet powerful rule is, is uh, so helpful in deciding how to focus our energy and our efforts onto things that will help us achieve more for ourselves, our families, and the people that we serve. Basically, the 80-20 principle, if you've never heard of it before, is that principle uh, that was studied by scientists who discovered that in the natural world, in biology, in plants, uh, and even animals, 20% of the work that is done creates 80% of the results. 20% um, of the plants that grow 
produce 80% of the berries or the beans or the other vegetation. So in terms of what is productive in this world and how do we become more productive as attorneys, uh, also as people who serve our clients, 20% of what we do will actually achieve, in most cases, 80% of the results or the outcomes that we're seeking. And the flip side of that is also true. In our own practices, 80% of what we do from day to day typically creates 20% of the results. So there's all the busy work that we have, checking emails, sending faxes, talking to potential clients, uh, even you know when we were going to courthouses more often, talking to other attorneys as we pass them out in the hallway, hang out with them. Uh, the the 80% of our time is often spent on things that only produce 20% of the results in our our lives. And as I think about this, and, and it, it's kind of forced me to step back and ask myself, how much time am I spending every week? on my law practice and what are the particular things I need to do from day to day to achieve the results that I'm getting right now and is there room for me to reconfigure how I place my energy where I place my energy to focus more on the 20 percent of the activities that I do from week to week that will help me <clears throat> achieve 80 percent of the results take away from the 80% that I do that is such a, a, a time suck and a, a waste of my time that produces 20%, shift some of that energy to the 20% that helps me achieve the 80% of my goals and my outcomes. I'm going through this process right now. It's the first work day of the year. It's January 3rd, 2020, 2020, 2022, excuse me. And I just found that this was really helpful. Uh, and I hope that you can look at this process. You can look it up online, YouTube, social media, the 80-20 principle, the 80-20 rule. Uh, I, I think generally the idea stands true. And I see it in my own practice all the time. Even in my own marriage or family life, the 20% of the things I focus on get me 80% of the results that I want. And uh, so as I think about trying to be more productive, how to better use my energy this year to achieve the things that I really want to achieve, uh, because let's face it, our energy is not unlimited. And when we think about using uh, the strongest part of our energy, usually at the beginning of the day, I think it's really important to think, what am I spending my time on in the early parts of the day, in the morning hours, where I'm the freshest, the strongest, the most uh, sort of excited about a new day, to achieve more than if I just casually start the day either without a plan or disorganized, checking emails, scrolling on social media, maybe chit-chatting by the, the coffee maker at the office, blow, wasting, blowing that energy, that time that, that you know I could otherwise be using to achieve more in less time. How can I reset the way I spend my time each day? And by thinking about that and then creating a simple plan that can help you uh, organize your day a little better. I've even heard people talk about, uh, let's say for example, uh, the four hour work week. A great book, little orange book, uh, something worthwhile reading. You think, how could I do my job in four hours every week? Well, some of the things we do, we can uh, spin off to an assistant whether it's a, a, a live person or a virtual assistant who works remotely. Um, some of these things that we spend a lot of time on, we can let somebody else do. Some of the things we spend a lot of time on, we can actually scrap all together. We don't even need to do them. That could be some of the emails that we get involved in. That could be 
uh, spending too much time on a phone call with a pers prospective client that we end up uh, wasting several hours each day and nothing materializes out of that. Now, of course, there's going to be all sorts of different ways to look at this and, and creating a balance with how we spend our time. We have to make calls, we have to call back prospective clients, so on and so forth. But I think what is worth looking at in your life, and I know has been worth looking at in my life and in my practice, is how am I spending my time? Can I do more with less time, which then frees me up to work on other projects or spend time working on myself, either fitness, studying things, reading, time with my wife, time with my kids, uh, time engaged in hobbies that I love to do. Uh, and can I also compress the amount of time it takes to accomplish certain things that I have to do at work? I'll give you one example of that that has really been helpful for me. If I have a brief I need to work on and it's 20, 25 pages, I know it'll take quite a bit of time. I set a, a timer for myself where I'm going to work an hour on this at a given period of time and try to hammer out as much as I can in that period of time. Because I know after about an hour or so, I start slowing down and slacking and then the time I'm spending either researching or writing that brief is, is, is going to be a lot less efficient and therefore I'm burning daylight and it's not helping me achieve my outcomes as much as I want to. Um, so if it's something I have to do myself, like writing a brief, making sure that I use the time efficiently. And if I find myself starting to, to wane in my energy levels, then cut it out. Either get some coffee, take a break, do something else, pivot to something else where I can use that time more effectively. Because one thing that I've learned, the older I get, is time is... Uh, it's an expensive commodity in the sense that we can never get it back and there's only so many hours in the day and for us attorneys who our time is our stock and trade it's it, it really behooves us to figure out how we can use our time more efficiently to achieve the things that we need to to effectively run our practice but also to achieve the things that we want to so we can find more fulfillment in our practice and in our lives. So as you think about this year, 2022, think about your resolutions, you think about what it is you want to accomplish this year, I think one key principle to look at is this 80-20 principle. Uh, I think looking at some of the big decisions that people like George Washington have made that have secured the freedom for so many of us now who live in the US. Uh, big decisions require practice at making little decisions wisely. Just like big choices in life require that we practice making smaller choices throughout our day. And so practicing how to use our time wisely, practicing how to use our time most efficiently in order to achieve the things that we want to and in order to help the people that we serve the best we can I think is really important. So I'm going to sign off with that. Some of this may be a little choppy. Uh, I apologize. It's been a while since I've done a video uh, podcast. So I want to get back in the saddle. I want to again encourage you as a criminal defense attorney that you have a vital mission in our country. There's so much talk about the criminal justice system and criminal justice reform these days. But you and I who are on the front lines as criminal defense attorneys are really the ones who have to, to make criminal justice reform happen because we're the ones working hand in hand with our clients. Those people who are accused of crimes uh, and, and ultimately who could lose their freedom if they're found guilty or convicted or sentenced, whether uh, justice is accomplished or not in so many ways is up to you and I. So. I want to encourage you to keep fighting, keep fighting for justice. Let's renew our 
enthusiasm, our vigor, our energy, our excitement about making our criminal justice system, both here in the U.S. and throughout the world, the best it can be so that justice, true justice, for each and every person who is accused of a crime can be obtained and so that as individuals, you and I as the criminal defense attorneys working with those people can really feel a part of that process and make it our own, make the best that it can possibly be. Hope you have a phenomenal 2022. Let's start off strong. Let's make this happen. Let's continue to fight for freedom.